Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the second episode, uh, second and final episode, of the final arc of Psyche Kuso no Sidon, or oh, the disastrous life of Psyche K. So, last episode, what happened? Well, mostly there's an epic battle between siblings for the most part. That kind of involved a couple of those psychics, you know, here and there to kind of help out. But it was mostly between the two of them. You know, that's what it was all about, just that, that sibling rivalry, you know. So yeah, I... I wonder what this episode will entail. Probably not any of that. Probably something completely different. Maybe more Terahashi, perhaps. I guess we'll see. So let's get into it. Three, two, one, play. Yes, we are. Last time I'll ever be seeing the opening. Very sad. <laughs> Very sad. I mean, I guess it could technically just rewatch the opening by itself, but it wouldn't be the same. It would not be the s same. However, I will always keep my pants on to remember this opening by... as a tribute to the opening, basically. How do you people not get dizzy from that? Whatever you say, open it. Oh. Planning out specifics for the trip. Oh, what trip? Goal trip? We already had one of those in the show, didn't we? Yeah, just do whatever. Oh, okay. That's a plan. That's a plan right there. That changes everything. <laughs> wow. Some people are taking this more seriously than others. Yes, yeah, so when busy in a goddess, that's very true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't you dare do that in Terahashi's house. I mean, go use a bush or something, Dendo. <laughs> and the music plays. <laughs> oh, Jeffu. You guys should have got here sooner. <laughs> it's not just a girl's room. This is Terahashi's room. Big difference. Says that is very important in this situation. Get off the bed, Nendo. Get out, Nendo. Get out. One person at a time. Uh huh. What's that reaction? Why? Am I forgetting something? I could be. Very sparkly. <laughs> uh. I guess it's Oshimai. Guma could be good. <laughs> that is really scary. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, using Mera. You don't often see Psyche work this hard in a conversation. Uh, 
Well... Yeah, what's wrong with Oshimai? Unless that's the place with that one disaster thing. Okay, so it is that place, okay. That was the only guess I could think of, so... Yeah, you can't tell them that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, they are just conspiring against you, Psyche. <laughs> No! No, it does not! Don't we all? <laughs> now the world is just coming against Psyche here. Uh, poor Psyche. <laughs> uh, man, he just was defeated there. And that's what happens when you go against the writer of the story. You're, you're gonna lose. <laughs> what that does show is that we're definitely gonna come to a head with uh, the conflict, the overall world ending conflict. It's a great mountain. Wow. Uh, gross. I'm still pissed off at seeing Nendo on Terachi's bed. I would murder him if I could. Probably the thing that angered me the most in the entire show. <laughs> Indeed. Pretty cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> and very awkwardly animated. Awadi, oh, very fit in him. Oh, <laughs> okay, I guess that makes sense. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Damn, Mara, you are you are something, all right. <laughs> I guess we missed the whole adventure there. <laughs> oh my god, that that is something. <laughs> that's that's funny. Let's have fun, guys. I know Mara has fun. <laughs> yeah. What? What? What happened? We're gonna go camping, you know, the mountain. S skydiving appointment. Oh. Why would you leave anything to Nendo? Yeah, they're really not. <laughs> Mara, that missing a beat. Uh... Psycho. <laughs> wow. Uh, nobody needs your help, psycho. Okay, here we go. Well, we can't have guys and girls staying in the same room.
Yeah, that's the one that matters. But we're probably going to get a lot, lot less screen time with that one, aren't we? Uh, Nendo. So we're going to have some hot spring fun. Saving the world from apocalyptic disaster. Oof. <laughs> wow. Here we go. I guess they're sharing a room. <laughs> I know, right? How, how dangerous could you get? Okay. It's hard to read the subs when you keep flashing images. The point is they're here to help. Okay, I got that much. <laughs> How much fun did you guys have? Usually it's the girls that are the pillow fight enthusiasts. Ah, okay. We just gotta distract. <laughs> yeah, that's all Psyche ever says, as we established last episode. You should, you should be fine. Yeah, so straight goes a bit more reliable than doubles. It'll be fine. Luckily, they all have names. <laughs> Guess they would have to have them, but I would just give them numbers personally. They don't get attached. Uh. Okay, we're getting close. Didn't even check, but how long is the episode? Yeah, standard length. You look nothing like Psyche. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So it goes. Just like that. <laughs> I bet. Teleporting magma to space, wow. That would be that's the way to deal with it, yeah. Yeah, maybe 10 will be enough. We'll see. Yeah, nobody will be bothered by the magma in space. It's cold in there anyway. <laughs> it looks like he's trying to destroy the Earth or something. You know, from an outsider's perspective. Okay, he's gonna help. But yeah, we don't want to have to keep looping. That's always been a bandit solution. We want to get it solved. Okay, did we do it? Well, that's a very promising mid card. But I, I I wasn't able to read the name at all. He's probably fine. Just a little bit scratched up. That's what matters. <laughs> uh, why would you say no to that? <laughs> I guess that's something. I'm just hugging a girl. What are you doing?
Uh... <laughs> Why is that the first thing you came up with? Uh... Yeah, I guess Torres get into his job. Oh, yeah, that would be a problem. Yeah, so why are they here? Why did you fail so badly? God damn it, Troitska. We gotta smack you for this later. <laughs> yeah, look in the bright side. Yes, I'm Psyche. Can't you see the red hair? Ridiculous glasses and antennas. <laughs> you can't yada yada your way out of this. <laughs> wow. That's... That's all it takes. Uh, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, that kind of took some focus. Again. One question at a time. <laughs> of course, this is what Terahashi cares about. <laughs> Talk about not being on the same page as everyone else. That's also the best explanation you could possibly give. It's your only option, though. Well, that's a problem, too. I have a lot of twins, just so you know. <laughs> Again, that's the only thing you can really do. I mean, we have told plenty of people about our powers. What's a few more? The Chudi would probably be okay with it. Terahashi would probably accept it. I guess we do. What are you waiting for, then? Nendo. Uh, I can't have I got chills from a Nendo scene. Uh, Nendo, stop. Stop tempting me to not hate you. I know, right? That is, no, that is the most shocking thing about that scene. Make no mistake, Psyche. The end of Psyche Kusa Part 2. So I guess I now know what the other one was. Yeah, everybody has their own secrets, you know. Oh, there is a love confession too. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that, sh that changes things. <laughs> uh, yes, right, Terahashi? You know, hypothetically. <laughs> uh. Okay, I guess that's that. Uh. Don't want to hear that from you. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> uh, yada yada. Oh wow, those eyes. Those are not eyes you see on Psyche often. And yeah, you talk too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess that's more a bigger deal, but the eyes is what got me first. Yes. <laughs> so I'll tell you about my powers after I seal them away forever. Yeah, you can't really prove it at that point. <laughs> He's talking about it. <laughs> uh. Wow. <laughs> uh. yeah, I kind of would be excited. Don't do it, Psyche. Don't do it. Uh, I guess I couldn't stop him. Uh. <laughs> That's pretty lucky, Tarashi. Congrats. I mean, it's pretty obvious what she's thinking, let's be honest. <laughs> oh wow. That How dare other people be here? About the powers, I assume. <laughs> Former. Yeah, you can't teleport away from that anymore. Uh. Was that your powers that did that, or. Did somebody just hit a baseball to the window? Are your powers not truly gone? Was that the implication? Are we not gonna see you tell them everything? Are you just skipping past that, too? Okay. I guess I'm trying to make the end a bit open ended. <laughs> Anyway, more importantly, this is the last time I'm going to be seeing this opening, the CD, so. Should focus on that. Whew. I wonder if we'll get a stinger, hopefully. No, we, we do not. Okay, that was, you know, the second and final episode of the final arc of the disastrous life of Psyche K. And this episode, it was focused on taking care of the disaster, which makes sense. You know, ever since they brought that up, you could kind of guess that that would kind of be endgame, you know, fixing that problem and actually finally being able to advance in time. And that's, that's what Psyche did. It was tricky, though, because... <laughs> Just like everything was against him because they wanted to go on a trip and they ended up going on a trip to the place where he had to go to take care of that at the same time that he had to take care of it at. So that added an extra layer of difficulty to an already very difficult task. So, you know, that sucked for Psyche. But he, he tried to fight it as much as he could, but in the end, it was no, he had no chance. It was just not going to happen. 
But, you know, he was able to make do because he did get Miko and Toritsuka to help out with it. Toritsuka was a stand-in for Psyche, as he's been several times in the in the show itself. So, so that all makes sense. But he also utilized a bunch of his doubles because Kusuke told him that, hey, you might need more of you, more than one of you to do this properly. So he made a bunch of dummies or doubles that Miko gives names, I guess. I assume she's the one that named them. It just kind of makes sense. I don't think Psyche would bother. But yeah, basically they all worked together to transport the, the magma into space. That's actually pretty brilliant. Like, I was wondering what he would really do to solve the problem. Because, you know, what would he do? But yeah, teleport into space is great. You know, anytime you have a problem that you just can't leave on Earth, you just throw it in space. It's, it's, it's you know, the perfect solution. Because a magma would get would cool down pretty quickly in space. So even if it landed on, like, an alien planet, it wouldn't have hurt them. It would just be cold at that point. You know, so it's all good. It's all fine. But uh, yeah, just I cannot believe Nendo, just the audacity of that man. First talking about taking a dump in Terashi's house and then just laying on her bed. Just mm, you're lucky I didn't break your neck over that Nendo. You're, you're very lucky. But uh, yeah, you know, they were all there getting to experience that wonderful, lovely home, a wonderful, lovely room rather, which is nice for them, I suppose. But yeah, this the, that really was funny. Just the scene where they were figuring out where to go and Psyche's desperate attempt to stop them from going to that one place. And no matter what he did to divert it, it kept going back. That was hilarious. But yeah, they didn't run into the troubles though, even though they were having fun. Oh, no, first I gotta mention Mera. That was hilarious. That was really, really funny. Just Mera, <laughs> Mera showing up there a week, just going on a journey a week earlier. <laughs> Because she can't afford to actually properly ride the train or whatever, so she just hitchhikes and goes on this amazing epic adventure, meeting so many great people and having so many new experiences just to get there. That was that was crazy. That was great. I love that. But anyway, they ran into issues with the hotel. Like somebody screwed up the reservations. You know, either Hiro or Nendo did, depending on how you want to look at it. Hiro got the blame, of course, because it was it was more his fault, honestly. It's like if you, it's like when you have your six-year-old child babysitting your three-year-old child and something happens to the three-year-old child it's your fault as a parent not the six-year-old's fault you know it's kind of like that and people really do stuff like that it's mind-blowing that people think that's okay but i'm not going to go on a rant here <laughs> that was just meant to be an example but the point is that they could not have the hotel they, they had to work something else out and luckily psycho was around you know because he just he does like he drives random locations because all of japan's his garden or whatever so they they made that work out so that was something Good, at least. Marriage is eating more food, as she does. But yeah, like I said, Joyska and Miko showed up to help out with the, the whole disaster thing. And they they worked on that, basically, doing their best. But things kind of took a bit of a turn when, uh, you know, the gang showed up suddenly. Like, Psyche, what's going on here? Why are there why are there two of you? Why are there uh, several other of you over there? What's What was with the... The magma, like, what, what did you do to that? How did how did any of that work? I'm so confused, Psyche, tell me what's going on here. You know, they were just kind of talking about that whole thing. And Psyche, you know, well, Toritsuka was the one that brought the twins thing, and that was really the only real reasonable excuse you could have for having several of yourself being around is, yeah, twins, you know, sex tuplets or whatever, yeah. That's the only real, it might be a stretch, you know, but it's the only real straw that you could grasp at. In that situation. And they were kind of backing him into a corner where he had to just confess his psychic powers, but he didn't do that. And Nendo, oddly enough, actually made that easier. Like, he's the one that really pushed for that. Like, Psyche's, he has the right to have his own secrets as well, you know. Doesn't mean he doesn't trust us or anything, it's just his decision, you know. And he has his reasons for it. And then you have people like Chio confessing to Kaido to kind of prove the point that, yeah, you know, people have secrets. Terahashi has her secrets, you know. She hasn't told Psyche everything that's on her mind of course and all that and we saw that one scene where like they're all i think they're all in psyche's room or whatever and they were talking about wow psyche you have psychic powers what what the heck that means you've been able to read our minds this whole time that means you've been able to see the right clothes this whole time and they were saying stuff like that and then we saw the same scene but later and they were just accepting of it like well i guess it's no big deal after all so, you know, Psyche knows that they would accept him for who he is, but that's not quite good enough for him. He wants to just kind of end the psychic powers to begin with and then tell them about everything, you know, and just try to live a normal life. It's kind of what he decided to, to go with. And I disagree with that decision. I would want to keep psychic powers personally, but it's not my decision. It's his, and I have to respect that. 
You know, initially I thought that thing was meant to be stabbed into the hand because it came in a ring box, so I figured he would just stab it into his finger like a ring, you know? But no. I I say I thought that, but I didn't really think that. I just thought it would be funny. But no, it just, everything goes in the head because that's where the brain is and that's where psychic powers come from, so it all makes sense. I can't argue with any of that. Yeah, but after all that was said and done, the, the one classroom scene was funny when he said, I, I have no idea what Terahashi is thinking because I can't read her mind. And it was funny because it was a scene where it was blatantly obvious what she was thinking to anyone that was watching. Like, even without her monologuing in her head, we, we would know what she was thinking. It was very straightforward. But yeah, the real interesting thing, though, is that once Psyche saw the bug, he freaked out a little bit, he can't teleport away anymore, which sucks for him, and then the window broke. Which is obviously supposed to imply that there, that there may still be some psychic powers within him that it didn't actually work. So, they're obviously trying to be a little bit vague with that, you know, not elaborate too much on that. Because that could just be a little bit of a, a little bit of a remnant of power, you know? Like, just a little bit of droplets of power left in his brain that shock or surprise can, like, unleash suddenly. So, you know, it, it's a little bit open to interpretation, I guess, but... I like to believe that he still has his powers, that it failed, and that he still has to deal with being a psychic for the rest of his life. That's kind of what I choose to believe, personally. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that to you, but we also had a scene where Psyche actually said something, you know. I was a little bit distracted by his eyes, like, that distracted me a lot, to, to the point where it barely registered with me that he actually spoke. But luckily the characters pointed it out, so that kind of clicked. I was like, oh yeah, he did say something. Because he did technically say something before, you know, oh, Ofu, you know, with Hirashi several episodes ago. But this was the first actually really saying something deliberately in front of multiple people. You know, not like a Hirashi, but like, huh, but did I hear something? So it definitely meant a lot, really. But, uh, but yeah. That's pretty much all I had to say on the episode, really. It's just the end of the series, which is unfortunate because this is one of the best, you know, the best gag comedy anime about a psychic I've ever seen with some very great memorable memorable characters like Psyche and Terahashi. I will never forget Terahashi for as long as I live. That's to, that's to be sure. But, you know, there's also some cool characters like Kaido. I like Kaido a lot. You know, his dark reunion shenanigans were always entertaining. Troitsuka was... A bit, bit more forget on the forgettable side, but as a like them, he was so cool. Miko probably also will remember for a while. She was a great character as well. Definitely a, a great character. Chio, you know, probably wouldn't forget Chio. She was pretty special in her own way. Mera, I don't think I'd forget Mera either. She just, she's an interesting one. She loves to eat, and she's a little bit on that crazy side sometimes with the things she does. Her week-long hitchhiking adventure. That's not a thing a normal person does. But that's okay. That's definitely okay. But yeah, that the point is I'm going to miss this show. And you can't really say things like, hey, maybe we'll get another season because it's straight up called the final arc. The show, no, the show is done. This is it. There's no, there's no more. This is the end of the story. It's all been wrapped up. I mean, of course, you can think about it in your head, you know, what they'll do in the future because it's like they're, these people's lives are over. They'll continue to, to move to, to, you know, to progress their lives. And, you know, I like to believe that that Psyche will eventually marry Terahashi, you know, two years on the line. Eventually, Terahashi will work fully work her magic on Psyche. He'll think, you know what, this girl's great. I guess I, I'm okay with spending the rest of my life with her. And then they have a bunch of beautiful children and live happily ever after, you know, in that nice big Terahashi house. And the brother is still salty about that, you know, and holds a grudge against Psyche forever, most likely. And Miko becomes a successful psychic, you know. And Nendo, I don't know, becomes a hockey player or something. I don't know what Nendo would do. Chio probably, I mean, I can almost guarantee you Chio and Kaido get together. Get married, have a bunch of Chuni children. <laughs> and all that. Maybe Psycho continues to learn valuable life lessons about how you shouldn't treat poor people like dirt just because they have less money than you. And uh, what else? Yeah, I think that I think that's enough. The point is, yeah, I'm sure they'll have a great life in the future, even if we don't get to see it as viewers. And it's been a great ride. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snokey for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.